Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Moore Presbyterian Church. I am Pastor Dave, and I am so glad that you are all joining us here this morning for worship, whether you're in person or joining us online. We hope that you feel like family with us today. If you don't mind, we'd love it if you'd take a moment to fill out a welcome card. We have these in the backs of the pews. If you're online, you can just leave a comment or check in on Facebook. Let us know you were here. We also have these green prayer tree cards that you can use to share a prayer request. Those are also in the backs of each pew. Just fill them out and you can put them in the offering box at the back anytime during or after the service. If you'd like to keep it private, just mark that you would like to do that. If you're online, feel free to share a prayer request uh, via comment as long as you are okay sharing it publicly online. Now let us begin our worship this morning by pledging our allegiance to Jesus Christ using the following affirmation of faith, saying, in life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. Lord, we thank you for this day that you've made and for gathering us here to speak to us your word, to meet us in, in person through the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask your blessing upon this time that your name would be glorified and that you would continue your work within our lives, that work of salvation that you began and that you will finish on the day of Christ. We also confess our sins to you, admitting freely, openly, trustingly, that we have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, nor have we always loved our neighbors as ourselves. So Lord, forgive us and purify us from all unrighteousness as you have promised to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, the mercy of our Lord is deeper and wider and higher than we can possibly imagine. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen.
in your church. As we just come sit down on the floor or on the steps. Grab a seat. There's lots of open space. It is so good to see all of you this morning. Do you want to have a seat right there, Jonathan, or do you want to sit here or there? That's a perfect spot. All right, well, it is so good to be with each of you in worship this morning. Let's pray and ask God's blessing uh, before we head over to Junior Church. God, we thank you for this day, and we ask your blessing on Junior Church in just a few moments uh, for the children with us today and for those of us staying in the sanctuary as we prepare to receive your word. In whatever form and whatever age, we ask that you help all of us to receive your word with faith like a child so that it would grow deeply within us and bear good fruit. We ask this blessing in Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can head over to Junior Church right there. <laughs> there you go, bud. There are days when I miss faith like a child. <laughs> I mean that sincerely. All right, our first reading of scripture comes from 1 Samuel 15:34 to 16:13. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? He said, well, There remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him. For we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wonderful. Well, um, good morning, everybody. How are you? Good. Uh, I am so excited and grateful to be here and to get the opportunity to share a message with you all. Um, but before we dive into scripture, I would like to take a moment just to pray over our time together. Heavenly Father, I 
thank you so much for the chance to get together to sit under your word and your teaching and to worship together uh, in community. Father, I pray that you would bless our time together, the short time that I have to preach your word. Um, I pray that ears would be open uh, to listen uh, and eyes would be open to see and that uh, your word would not just be um, a piece of wisdom, but that it would uh, engage and that it would inspire action. Uh, we thank you so much for your living word and your grace upon us. In your heavenly name, amen. Well, um, I would love to dive into our scripture to get us started today. Uh, we are in Mark 4, chapter, 20, or chapter 4, verses 26 through 34, um, where Jesus says this. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts his sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say of the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable should we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. Now with many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. So, um, this is the word of the Lord. Now, since I'm up here and I have the opportunity to share in front of you all, I thought I would take a moment to give you a brief background of from high school to now, how I got to be standing in front of you. And I want to challenge you all to listen to a, a distinct shift that happened in my life from high school until now. So, uh, starting in high school, uh, as a freshman, I had uh, acquired this mindset that uh, the kids call senioritis. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but it, um, it basically means that I was over school uh, upon arrival. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, and this perspective towards education really was, was rooted in the belief that education was designed for me to fail. Um, and this attitude, along with a lack of action, had caused me to fail my first half of my high school experience both freshman and sophomore years of high school, I did very poorly and I ended up failing because of that. Uh, fortunately, I was able to graduate through the grace of God and through um, a different form of education that I received upon transferring high schools. And so I was able to graduate. But um, I unfortunately was not accepted into uh, many different colleges that I applied to. Um, I had applied to multiple colleges. It was my last hope before just working at McDonald's for the rest of my life. Um, and yeah, they, these colleges had, had prided themselves in having a very high acceptance rate and I was denied. Um, I, I was working night shifts at McDonald's, quite literally. That was my last hope before working the rest of my life at McDonald's. And my family was going through some really difficult times. Um, what I did have, though, what I did have was my faith and my church community. Shortly before graduating in my, my broken state, I started to 
just reconsider what it is that I'm doing in my life and where I want to go. And in me doing that, opportunities started to spring up. I, uh, I was invited to do an internship at a church that I had begun to go to. Um, I started to um, preach in a youth group and to uh, sit under incredible leadership of uh, leaders learning how to better my relationship with God and with others and how to grow in my faith and how to uh, lead in a ministry setting. I was given the opportunity to serve 2,500 middle schoolers over the, the span of a month in quite literally the middle of nowhere, Central Oregon. Um, take it an hour drive into a canyon with no cell phone service, um, and it gets 120 degrees every day, and uh, it was incredible. And finally, I was given the opportunity after graduating to be a part of a staff that supported one of the, the fastest growing churches in the country, and to learn how church is done, and to learn how to serve the community and do well. Now, I tell you all of these things because I reflected on them this past week. And um, reflecting upon these things, I was able to make a pretty significant distinction between my brokenness towards the beginning of my high school time to now me standing in front of you here today. I, I discovered that the lost portion of my life was me... Uh, thinking that I can do this on my own. The uh, grasp so tight that my knuckles were turning white. Um, and it wasn't until I, I had a posture of open hands in submittance um, or of submission to what God has for me that I began to grow and flourish. Now, acknowledge, acknowledging this submission of God uh, was challenging, but that is where I found fruit. I noticed that in my, my desire to be in control, that that was actually what was holding me back from experiencing fruit in my own life. And so, um, these experiences that, that I was given once I submitted to God, I, I call those seeds. If we look at the scripture that I read earlier, uh, Jesus talks about seeds and refers to them as uh, what the kingdom is. And the opportunities that I experienced are seeds. So, uh, what does this story, this uh, experience that I shared with you, have to do with uh, my title, Kingdom Cultivation? Well, um, I named this sermon Kingdom Cultivation because we are given the opportunity to participate with God in the restoration of all things here on earth. Um, the, the restoration of God's kingdom here on earth. And this invitation calls us to be countercultural, to step away from desiring control and to instead submit to God's plan and to... Um, be in assistance to God's plan, but to have full faith that he knows what he's doing. Uh, how many of you enjoy gardening? If I could get a raise of hands. Wonderful. Me too. It's, it's just a, a wonderful hobby that I uh, got to do when I was younger uh, in just uh, small opportunities throughout my childhood. Well, whether we uh, enjoy gardening or we just have a brief knowledge of it, we can all acknowledge that the only way that we are able to ensure an opportunity for growth is to scatter seeds. Um, in getting a seed, the only way that we can uh, watch that seed grow is to plant it. Uh, anything else uh, surrounding gardening is a chance that we're taking. And we don't know if it's going to grow or not. It's not in our control. There are things that we can do that maybe can increase our chance, but the one thing that ensures growth 
is planting seeds. Dave and I, um, Pastor Dave and I, over the past few months preparing for me to come, have uh, just over the phone dreamt and gotten very excited for my time here, uh, though it's brief, and how we can grow as a church community and how I can grow personally um, and how the church leadership can grow. And I really like to say that Dave and I got really excited at a chance to take chances. And uh, a chance to take chances is the idea of being given the opportunity to ta scatter seeds. I'm not here for a long time, only 10 weeks. And the one thing that I have the ability to do is to scatter seeds and to have faith that God will grow the seeds that he wants to see grow. And uh, the same is true for all of you. Um, and though it is true, it isn't necessarily the easiest. We are living in a complex time in humanity. Um, one where we're in this weird limbo, especially as Christians. We have been saved through Christ's death and resurrection. Our souls have been saved from uh, an eternity of suffering. And that chapter is closed. But Christ has also opened a new chapter for us all one that invites us to participate with God and the restoration of his kingdom here on earth. And so our call goes from entering into relationship with God to maintaining relationship with God and extending that invitation to others. What I admire and get so excited about is that I or we don't need to sit quietly and wait in what Christ has already done, but that we have an invitation extended to us to participate in what God is doing here on earth now. Um, I will tell you that me standing in front of you is a result of people taking chance, spreading seeds and taking opportunity instead of sitting still and sitting stagnant. This call leads us to uh, the statement. Uh, it's Christ's call, um, and it is, I am not the master gardener, I am his assistant. And, and what I mean by that is, in us searching for the call of God, we enter into relationship with him. And once we enter into relationship with him, we live into that call. It's no longer a game of hide and seek, but it is a game of playing tag um, where Christ invites us. He literally hands us a packet of seeds and says, start scattering. Now, that responsibility to take chances is rooted in faith that God, the same God who breathed stars out of his mouth, to create the universe. We'll take these little seeds that we scatter and grow them to be the largest plants in the garden that create shade for us to sit under or for birds to perch on and so on. Um, with all of this being said, I want to end with a challenge for you all. I hear often of people desiring to see growth. And that growth can only start if you begin to scatter seeds. And so my challenge for you is to take opportunities boldly, not through your own will, but through your faith that God knows what he's doing and that he has called you to do so. Let me pray, and then we will move on. Father, I thank you so much for your invitation to us all to participate actively in your, your kingdom work. I pray that we would not sit passive, but that we would be active in our faith and that we would take chances to watch your kingdom grow here on earth. I pray for courage and boldness 
and for action. Um, and I pray for your faithfulness in our scattering of seeds. Father, we love you and we thank you in your heavenly name. Amen. Thank you, Cameron. Your offering to the more Presbyterian Church supports the very ministry that Cameron has just talked about and invited us to continue, that ministry of scattering seeds, not always knowing which are going to grow or how they're going to grow because we're not the ones that grow them. And yet that generosity is where it begins. You can place your donations in the offering box at the back of the sanctuary anytime during or after the service. You can, of course, also donate online at lemorepress.com, our church website. There's a link there. You can also set up automated giving through your own bank. Whatever method of giving you choose, may your gift glorify God and establish his kingdom here and forever. Amen. Please rise. I was going to say you may be seated, but you already all sat down before I turned the microphone on. I could hear a lot more humming today of the doxology. I've noticed every week it's increasing. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Soon, soon we will be belting it out once again. Uh, but even the humming is a wonderful sound. Well, it is uh, fully trusting in God's promise uh, to grow the seeds that he wants to grow that we pray. It's in that faith and that trust that we are confident to lift up to God all of our hopes and our concerns. We scatter seeds among our church community and, and in the community at large, but prayer is also an act of planting. Uh, prayer makes us receptive to that which God wants to plant within us, within us which will then bear fruit beyond us. Um, so with that in mind, are there any prayer requests today that anyone would like to share? And if so, just raise your hand, uh, and I will jot those down, and we'll pray for those each uh, in turn. At the end, uh, again, of course, if you're online joining us today, feel free to share a prayer request via comment. You can also just call the church office uh, or send us an email anytime during the week. Are there any prayer requests today? Yeah, Suzette. Good. Thank you, Suzette. Uh, lifting up Dave Ecker in prayer, who's in King's Rehab uh, after finally figuring out that he had uh, two strokes and his blood sugar was haywire. So thankful that they know what to address and prayers for him while he is there. Thanks, Suzette. Other prayer requests today? Let me, uh, yeah, Steffi and then Jeannie, and then I'll go to the back. <laughs> Liam, I love your honesty. So certainly prayers. Sorry, I need to use the microphone here. Yeah, certainly prayers for all the sailors on the Carl Vincent, Paul included, um, and for their families and prayers for your family, family in particular. Um, 
How did you put it? The kids are driving mom up the wall. That's all right. We all know how that goes, and certainly prayers and lots of love surrounding your whole family during this time. Yeah, of course. Um, Jeannie, and then let me go to the back. Well, I am buying a house in process. I go prayers that that will go smoothly. It needs some repairs. It has renters in it, so they have to get 60 days to find a new home, which I certainly understand. Yes, prayers of, of praise uh, for Jeannie, uh, finally finding a house to buy and being in that process, and prayers for you as you go through that <laughs> uh, parallel process of buying and selling a house. Certainly, our prayers are with you. Thanks, Jeannie. Mary Kay. Uh, praise. I wanted to, um, should have last week, thank all of the ladies who stepped up to the plate to help with the dirt floor. Thank you, Mary Kay. Expressing praise and gratitude um, for all the ladies who helped uh, prepare and serve desserts for Harry Garcia's memorial service and, of course, the, the luncheon afterward, uh, especially Ann and Kim who were able to stay the whole time. Thank you to you as well, Mary Kay, and to all who helped make that service uh, so meaningful for that family. Other prayer requests today? Yeah, Shana. Amen. Thank you, Shana, lifting up the community garden in prayer that whenever we do the official sort of get together and open, uh, when the weather is a little, well, not so blazing hot, uh, that nonetheless it would be a blessing, uh, not, of course, not just to us, but to the community at large. Thank you, Shana, and to all who have been helping make that garden work. Other prayer requests in the sanctuary today? Yeah, Virginia. Thank you, Virginia. Prayers for our president as he meets uh, with Putin, um, a meeting I would not want to have personally and just a challenging one all around. So uh, prayers for wisdom and diplomacy and all that is needed for that. Thank you, Virginia. Other prayer requests today? Let me just check over in Fellowship Hall really quick. And are there any prayer requests in Fellowship Hall today? Yeah, Bird. Yeah, any others in here today? This is on prayers uh, from Verd for a childhood friend and their family, uh, the friend who died in a motorcycle accident uh, recently. So certainly prayers for them. Any others? Or shall we go ahead and pray together? Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for your faithfulness and your mercy, which comes to us new and fresh every morning. We pray for this world in which we live, connected, complicated, wonderful, 
and confusing. For the lives, the, the life that you give to each one of us, the life that we get to share with friends and loved ones, we thank you for it and for your creation. Trusting that even when we see darkness and brokenness, it is precisely that which you have come to redeem in the person, ministry, death, resurrection, and ascension and reign of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our King. God, we pray for world leaders, that you grant them wisdom to lead well, to serve before seeking power. Pray for the leaders in our own country, specifically with our president as he meets with Vladimir Putin, a challenging meeting to be sure, between two countries with a long history. We pray for governors, assembly members, mayors, city councils, and the countless, countless people who volunteer in various positions of leadership in our communities. Once again, asking for wisdom and good judgment as they lead and serve others. We pray especially for areas where there is violence, where peace seems impossible to find or achieve, and perhaps has seemed that way for a very long time. Lord, bless the peacemakers and remind us that that is precisely who we are called to be whenever we can. Lord, we pray for Dave Ecker in King's rehab after two strokes, praying for his recovery, that his time there would would help toward that recovery and would go by quickly so that it would seem to him as if it were but a short stay before being able to come home. Pray for Suzette and their family as well as they care for him. Lord, we pray for our military and their families, especially all those deployed recently and a bit ahead of schedule on the Carl Vincent, including for Paul, asking that you watch over them and keep them safe. We pray for the Shen family, just as with many other families affected by this deployment as well, that you give them each day your overwhelming love and grace, sometimes directly from yourself, other times through the encouragement and support of other friends and family around them so that they would never feel that they are doing this alone. Pray that you be with Jeannie, both buying and selling a house, and thank you for your faithfulness to her. Along with Mary Kay, we give thanks that in a church community like this, all one has to do is ask, and there is help at hand. We thank you for all those who helped to make Harry Garcia's memorial service meaningful and the following luncheon uh, an important time of fellowship for that family. We pray along with Shana for the community garden, asking that you continue to literally make it bear fruit and that you would, whenever the day is that we sort of officially open it and, and invite people to come down and take a look, that, that that would also be a fruitful time for this ministry and in this community. And Lord, would you take this community garden project in whatever direction you choose. May it lead to even more things, even more good ministry than has already been started. Lord, we pray for the Thompson family, childhood friend of Verds who was killed in a motorcycle accident recently. Praying that you attend to them and console them in their grief and fulfill your promise to comfort those who mourn. O oh God, in all of these things, including our unspoken prayers, which you know nonetheless, it deepens our longing for your kingdom to come. A kingdom that we now pray for as Christ has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are called to seek his kingdom first. One way you can do that this week, actually not this week, uh, is by joining us for the grilling in the garden. We, that, that's what Shana was referring to. We had planned to do the grilling in the garden at the community garden this Friday. If you've seen the forecast, uh, not that we've never been in that kind of heat before, but 6 p.m., 113 degrees, that's good for the tomatoes. It's just not as good for us. So our plan right now is to postpone that probably just one week to the following Friday. It's supposed to be under 100 degrees that day. But please stay tuned to the church e-newsletter. Uh, we will certainly make that official and get that word out as soon as we can to reschedule that. I also just want to invite you to consider uh, if Monday evenings are free for you, Cameron is going to be leading a wonderful book study on a powerful book uh, called Jesus and the Disinherited by a man named Howard Thurman, who was a mentor and a huge influence for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., phenomenal book uh, that I read myself years ago. Um, so I highly encourage you uh, to take part in that book study with Cameron. Uh, really be a, a meaningful and powerful time. So if you're able to, please sign up to do that as well. Amen. Please stand for the benediction. May you be women and men who take action and boldly and courageously seek chances to further the kingdom of God here on earth.